very warm welcome to our Maundy Thursday service. And this evening's service is part of our preparation for the Passion and then the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it begins this evening with the Eucharist of the Last Supper. So the worship service will include remembering Christ as servant with washing of the feet and the agony of his obedience in the Garden of Gethsemane. Just to let you know that as the service draws to a close, the lights will go off as I read the Gospel of the Watch. So don't be alarmed when the church is in darkness. And then after that time, you are invited either to come to the Lady Chapel to keep a 20-minute watch in silence, or if you'd like to leave before that, please do. But we'll give you a signal when the 20 minutes watch is at an end. And whether you leave then or at the end of the service, we'll leave in silence. So we begin our worship together by singing hymn number 448, Meekness and Majesty. So let's stand. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Do be seated. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness, according to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin and we shall be clean. Wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. So let us pray that we may love one another as Christ has loved us. God our Father, your Son Jesus Christ was obedient to the end and drank the cup prepared for him. May we who share his table watch with him through the night of suffering and be faithful. Amen. So we now have our first reading. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Beloved, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn before our gospel reading is number 38. An upper room did our Lord prepare. So do stand.
Glory to you, O Lord. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already got, been put in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has been bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and had, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, so also ought to, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God had been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. At this service tonight, we recall a mystery. Mystery is a word used in the New Testament, particularly by St. Paul. It is a word that is familiar to us, but the New Testament meaning is rather different from our modern usage. When we say mystery, we mean something to which the answer has not yet been found. For instance, Many years ago, when I was adjusting the clock on my oven, the knob jumped off and I caught the spring, but I missed the knob itself and it flew away across my kitchen and despite searching exhaustively, I never found it. 
It is a mystery where it went. But in the New Testament, the word mystery means a secret that has been disclosed or is in the process of being disclosed. St. Paul uses it in relation to God's purpose, his plan of salvation as disclosed in the person of Jesus. Jesus is the open mystery of God. In this service this evening, we are recalling the institution of the Eucharist, which is the mystery of the real and living presence of Jesus Christ with his people of all time. He is with all of us now, his family in this place, and with his family in every place where the Eucharist is celebrated, to a no lesser degree than he was with his first disciples. This is the mystery, the secret being disclosed to us, that we frail human beings are together called into fellowship with the Anointed One of God. We ordinary mortals, for whom he was content to be betrayed and crucified, are united with him. In how many places and in how many different times throughout the ages has this sacrament been celebrated since that dark night long ago when Christ instituted it. And yet, it is always the same Eucharist, the people of God coming together to remember, to represent, to represent the Lord's death until he comes again, and to share in the mystical body and blood, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. The liturgy recalls in its words and ritual how this mystery has animated the church, how it has given the church its life in every age, how it has been the source of succour in times of sickness as in times of house, health, in times of adversity as well as prosperity. In this mystery, the Lord is present with us in his humility and also in his matchless strength. Yet tonight, that same Eucharist, Eucharist is different. Each Sunday throughout the year, our Eucharist is celebrated in the knowledge of the light and the joy of the resurrection. But tonight, as we approach the climax of our Lenten journey with Jesus, the backcloth of our celebration is very much of impending doom, destruction, and death. That same Jesus, who only five short days ago we accompanied through the city walls into Jerusalem, surrounded by crowds acclaiming him, with waving palms and singing, is now, very soon, to be arrested and dragged off and subjected to all the terrible cruelties that were the usual treatment of thieves and criminals. The disciples that evening were frightened and later forces too big for them to cope with would take over their lives. Worn out with worry, one minute they would fall asleep, the next they would be up and running. There seemed no hope. It was only later, much later, that the true meaning of what had been said and done this evening would become evident to them, that Jesus was to suffer and die in order to give new life to them, to us, and to all people. What powered Christ's strength to endure the trials he faced was his love for his Father 
and for everyone. And the animating principle of the Eucharist is love. And this night too, Christ gave us a new commandment about his love. The man Dartum gives us the name for today, Maundy Thursday. Many do not appreciate what mandatum means. It would be more appropriate if it were called Commandment Thursday, for this is the day when the Lord made it plain exactly what he wants from us by giving us this new commandment. First, that we love one another as he has loved us. Second, that we serve one another. This was demonstrated by his action of washing the feet of his disciples, as a servant always did in those days when people wore open sandals and walked on the hot, dusty roads. No paving stones or tarmac for them. Their feet got dirty and sweaty. His service was further demonstrated to all the world by his body stretched out on the cross on Good Friday. Jesus told us that we must love and serve people as a memorial of him. This was not just a simple request, it was a command. Jesus was not saying, would you mind doing this, or do it if you feel like it, or do it now and then, as and when. No, it is a command. Do this, here and now, and always. Love one another, serve one another, and keep doing it all the time, while at the same time remembering me, and that this is how I lived. So our Eucharist tonight is much more than mere ceremonial. We are making our recommitment to service, our rededication to mutual love. We are taking up our challenge to live out the Eucharistic life day by day in the world as we know it and as we meet it. Immediately after this service, we will move over to our garden of Gethsemane in the Lady Chapel to watch just for a short while. During it, let us ponder this love of Christ, its quality and its cost. Jesus was free to refuse when God called but he chose to go through with the whole awful pageant of betrayal and desertion, the lies, the half-truths, the evasions, the accusations, the pain, the torture, the violence, the fear, and the truth. And death. The disciples who sat around the table with him this night, heard and received the new command to love and to serve. And then they all failed him and fled. But God still used them despite their failure. His church was subsequently established through them. Let this be part of our meditation to this night. And may we recall Christ's words from the mystery we are now celebrating, which should ring in our hearts, not just tonight, but every day and forever. Do this in remembrance of me. Love one another. I have set you an example you are to do as I have done for you.
we say together the words on the top of page four. Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, you you have have taught taught us that that what what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us that are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father through Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world. Father, on this, the night he was betrayed, your Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us. And humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us. And unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us. And renew our zeal. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and the unloved. Lord, hear us. And fill us with your love. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us. And give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us, and And welcome welcome all your your children children into into paradise. paradise. Let's stand together now as we come to a time to share the peace. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with us. And our offertory hymn is number 363, Jesus the Broken Bread.
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel and, taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment, that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love he gave the, his supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Lord, you are holy indeed, the Lord, source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. John and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. It's, we sit or kneel now, and as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread 
and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption, for you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen.
When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here, while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of the companions reached for his sword, drew it out and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death but they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. 
Finally, two came forward and declared, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, in the future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Christ, who hit you? Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it all before them. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another girl saw him, and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are the one of them, for your accent gives you away. Then he began to call curses down on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. <laughs> 